All right, gang. Welcome aboard once again. It is time for the weekly Mac Forum video chat, the September 17th, 2017 edition. I'm your host, Sylvester Rock, a.k.a. Sly Dude, back with you again this week. Got a lot of stuff on this uh, week's agenda. So let's dive right into things and see where we're, where we're at here today. All right, first of all, uh, on a security-related note, I want to point out uh, member Rod Sprague, a uh, link to a ABC News Australia article about a vulnerability in Bluetooth-enabled devices that uh, could allow uh, things to be spread uh, from device to device, even if the uh, user in question had not clicked on a compromised link, okay? And uh, I put this in here now. When I say Bluetooth devices, I mean a phone. Theoretically, the, the uh, vulnerability exists on phones, uh, television sets, uh, tablets, uh, you name it, any kind of Bluetooth-enabled device. What I link to, the reason I link to this is because one of the things that's mentioned in here, although the vulnerability does affect uh, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, etc., if you are already running iOS 10 and you have an up-to-date version of the OS, uh, this vulnerability, vulnerability has already been plugged. So I put it in there. To, uh, this link in there to give you an idea of the importance uh, that sometimes comes into play with keeping your uh, OS up to date on your devices. I know sometimes that there are reasons why we don't want to do this for compatibility issues with other software and things of that nature, but uh, this is a case where keeping up with the security needs is a big deal. All right, now. Also, this uh, thread uh, deals with setting the volume for individual applications uh, so that, uh, for example, game sounds are not so loud. A lot of games have uh, these kinds of controls built in, but some do not. And the question arose as to whether uh, there were some uh, free alternatives that would give you control over the volume of an application. Uh, I believe you can do this with, with things like Audio Hijack Pro, but it's not a free uh, program. It does a variety of other things. Uh, I linked to two different pieces of software that I'm testing uh, in this thread just to see if they'll do that. One of them I had already had on my system. Uh, I'm not sure I have it configured uh, the way I wanted to. But uh, the re main reason I'm linked to this thread is not because of the software being discussed, but because uh, the member in question asked about whether, if you have a, a piece of demo software, for example, uh, whether it would auto bill your credit card when the time ran out on the demo. And uh, they spoke of it in terms of in-app purchases. So let's get a little clarification here. And I'll, I'll tell you what I've noticed based on. First of all, in-app purchases seems to be uh, something that is, for lack of a better word, unique to uh, iOS platform and, and similar, the mobile platform. I, I know Android, I believe, uses that as well. But uh, within the Mac realm, first of all, if you are in the uh, Mac App Store, it uh, you don't see application demos in there, really. Uh, to find the demos of the programs I referenced, I had to go directly to the uh, Apple site. And when it comes to things like um, application uh, billing 
within the App Store. If it's something you purchased from the Mac App Store, I want to show you something that you need to be aware of. If you go to Preferences in the App Store, as I'm doing now, one of your options here is, and you, as you can see, I've got it padlocked right now. I'm not going to go through the trouble of changing it. But down at the bottom here is a group of password settings. And as you can see, I've got it set to always require passwords for in-app purchases. And I've, uh, for app purchases, rather, purchases and in-app purchases. Okay, and then I've got another uh, setting here where if it's a free download, I still have it set to require a password. So if you're concerned about a purchase or an in-app purchase occurring automatically, go into preferences and set those two uh, settings to require your password. It's a little more inconvenient, okay, because you're going to have to enter that password. Hopefully, you've got a secure password, which means it's not just something like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you know, it's hopefully, it's something a little more complicated than that. I realize that's a little inconvenient to have to do, but it's one more uh, security measure that you can uh, take to make sure that you're not automatically billed for something that you don't want. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to get into some things that uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this tonight. And probably I'll be discussing this again next week with an eye toward some solutions to the things that we're about to discuss. Um, I had not really noticed. I have my iTunes, uh, my uh, Mac set to update the software because usually I don't have a problem. And I had not noticed until uh, member Charlie uh, mentioned that uh, there were some changes, some significant changes to iTunes 12.7, which is the release uh, that came out earlier this week. Uh, and let's just see if I can go through this without uh, really confusing you. There are some things that have been moved in iTunes 12.7, uh, and there are some features that were in iTunes 12.7 that were not in, uh, that are not in there anymore. Uh, they're handled differently. Uh, a number of things, and we'll get to those in a minute, but there are some, there's some discussion of that in this thread. You might find the discussion interesting. And uh, just to give you a heads up, uh, our old buddy Kirk McLaren, who used to be known as Kirk the iTunes guy, when he was writing for I about iTunes over at Macworld, uh, summarizes some of these um, changes. Uh, first of all, the App Store, okay, is gone from iTunes, okay? And just to give you an idea, okay? I'm going to launch iTunes here, and what, what happens is this. Uh, in the old days, i.e. just a couple weeks ago, if you were running iTunes, I'm going to slide iTunes over to my other uh, window here. All right, now, in the quote-unquote old days, if I'm in music right now, go to apps, I could click right here change to apps and it would show me uh, the the app store as well as uh, the apps that are in my library that's not there anymore that's completely gone now I have to tell you uh, I've been one of the complainers when it comes to iTunes and it trying to do too much okay I was one of those people that complained that maybe they needed to split up iTunes didn't quite figure they were going to do it quite this way. Okay, so things like application management and device syncing are not being handled in iTunes 12.7. Uh, we'll deal with that in a minute, how to get it. Ringtones are not there listed in 12.7 anymore. Okay, 
iTunes University is now split into two different places, okay? And there have been some changes in the uh, sidebar and libraries that are available in the sidebar. And a new feature that's rolled out talking about what's called listening history. And that's the ability to share what you listen to with your friends and followers, okay? Now, and that's if you check that within the preferences. If you check the preferences to allow it, you're allowing iTunes to share this information, okay? And I'm going to keep an eye on his site because he's promised to write uh, something more about this when uh, iOS launches, when iOS 11 launches. And uh, I'll have an update for you on that in a little bit. But let's go ahead and let's move on through iTunes. If this is not a detailed enough article for you, because it does open up some issues about how we're going to manage applications. Right now, the intention seems to be that you will load applications on your iOS device and that when you get ready to do uh, a restore, that you'll just restore these from uh, download. Uh, I can see that being a potential issue for those of you that have uh, smaller data plans or you don't you don't have a great signal uh, and 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 you may be rely on your cellular connection as opposed to using Wi-Fi so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that next next week I can see that affecting the way I manage things because in the past uh, I've always kept my apps on my Mac and when I needed to restore my phone I could do it in a matter of a few minutes. It could conceivably take longer now. And let me tell you, uh, I know about that restoration procedure because a couple, three times now, I've forgotten my restrictions passcode and had to erase the phone. Uh, this time, it would involve re-downloading applications. Now, uh, if I wait until I get home to do that, which is usually where I am, I can connect via Wi-Fi, and that won't be an issue. But when you're downloading uh, all of your apps that way, and uh, I don't see a way right now, okay, without possibly some third-party software. Um, what if you have multiple iOS devices? Uh, for example, you own an iPad and an iPhone. You download the app. Uh, and now you've got to go back and download it again. You know, so uh, this is some things that I'm looking at. I'll talk about more about this next week. But this article on Tidbits um, talks a little bit more. It may go into a little more detail than the article that I uh, showed you originally. I'll also have a link in tonight's show about Apple's uh, understanding and Apple's concept of how you should handle uh, these issues, okay? Uh, just among other things, uh, they're telling you how to re-download uh, apps from your iOS devices. Uh, your collections in iTunes University now appear in the podcast section of iTunes on your device. Internet radio stations appear in the sidebar, and I believe they did that originally. Uh, ringtones, okay? Re you can now kind of handle that. iTunes 11 uh, re-downloads ringtones directly to your device without the need for iTunes on your Mac or PC. But what I don't know, and I haven't looked at this yet, I, I found this article just uh, this morning as I was kind of going through some things. What I don't know just yet is, okay, it may download, uh, some of you remember when uh, the iTunes store used to have ringtones in, and it doesn't anymore as far as I can tell. But uh, what I wonder is this. Uh, if someone has taken the time to create a custom ringtone uh, in iTunes and then passed it over to their uh, phone via syncing like we used to do, how do we manage that now? 
Uh, I'm going to look into that a little bit. And as I say, I'll have some thoughts for you next week to kind of manage uh, this uh, situation. I'm definitely going to be looking at this in depth, uh, at this article in depth to see. All right. Now, now that we've got that bit of uh, bad news or questionable news over with, let's start talking about uh, the Apple announcement, Apple event that was held earlier this week at the Apple Park campus, the new Apple building. I believe it was in the what's commonly referred to as the Steve Jobs Center. And uh, of course, there were announcements relative to the Apple Watch Series 3, uh, the Apple TV, and of course, the wildly anticipated uh, iPhone changes. Uh, so let's get right into some of those changes. Uh, I've linked to a Mac Forum blog post that gives you money. But I also have some other information to go into a little bit more depth. Uh, one of the changes with uh, the Apple Watch is that it now has the ability to use a cellular connection. And, and that opens up some possibilities uh, for different things. And uh, in a minute, uh, I'll give you a, a link to where you can find some information on just how much the uh, various carriers are going to be charging here in the U.S. for a uh, uh, data plan for the uh, Apple Watch. Uh, some of that, I think, is still in a little bit of flux, but it'll give you a starting point anyway. Um, the most significant change to the watch basically is that in cellular operation. Uh, they've improved some of the sensors. Uh, you can't stream music, okay, or take calls without having your iPhone nearby. Uh, but you can use the same phone number as your phone, okay? And so getting that level of con connectivity is going to cost you about $400 for the watch, okay? Uh, and, of course, the new sports features have been enhanced. Uh, GPS tracking has been enhanced. The heart rate sensor has apparently been improved significantly. Okay? Uh, things like that. Uh, those, some of those are interesting to me. Uh, the Apple TV uh, is interesting to me because we've been thinking about uh, getting a new one anyway. I'm kind of limping along on the Apple TV 3, which is not quite as open to applications as the Apple TV 4 is. Uh, and so with this new one that would replace the Apple TV 4, one of the changes is 4K video, okay? And the base price is starting at about $179. Uh, that's for the 32 gigabyte model. Um, I've seen some pricing. Uh, the 64 gigabyte model is going to run something less than 200, right around 200. It's about a 20 to 30 dollar difference over the prices that I was seeing on the Apple TV 4. All right, the iPhone, of course, that's where we saw in some ways the most changes. I'm going to move over and show you some of the, the changes, some of the things I want to mention. Uh, of course, you've got the iPhone 10, uh, which is the anniversary edition, 10th anniversary of the iPhone. And as you can see, one of the changes is uh, this glass. The, the whole front edge, front screen here basically is glass. Uh, the side here stainless steel and of course you've got the three buttons here uh, if you'll notice the home button is missing on this model it does not have the fingerprint id slash home button okay the iphone uh, x or iphone 10 is pre-ordered uh, beginning in october 27th it's going to be available um, november 3rd the pricing that i'm seeing says the base price 
something on the order of a thousand dollars for the base model and I want to pull up a little more information just to give you a good look at this uh, as I go forward let's take a look at the technical specs here what you're getting for your thousand dollars all right the uh, capacities a 64 gigabyte model and a 256 gigabyte model uh, weight five inches high uh, just under three inches wide, uh, depth of three tenths of an inch, and weighs about six, uh, less than six and a half ounces. Uh, a 5.8 inch display, it's higher resolution than even uh, the iPhone 8. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, 3D touch, of course, is built in. And one of the things is using the A11 chip that was talked about in uh, the keynote this summer, earlier this summer. Uh, camera improvements, including portrait lighting mode, six element autofocusing have been improved, uh, all of those things. But one of the things with the camera changes that has come about with the uh, anniversary edition with the iPhone 10 is facial identification. In other words, where normally now we are using our fingerprint or a passcode uh, to get into our phones, in theory, you could use facial identification. You don't have to, okay? You can still get in using your, your fingerprint or a passcode, but, uh, or, or a passcode rather. You don't have to use facial ID but obviously it's an option on the anniversary model. Uh, if one of you guys wants to give me an anniversary model for my birthday, uh, I won't be buying that one anytime soon because, it, as I say, it starts at around about a grand. Uh, but facial recognition, according to Apple, it is pretty good initially and then it will adapt uh, to you. And it shouldn't be fooled by things like uh, whether you're wearing glasses versus not wearing glasses, uh, whether you're, you know, changes like growing a beard versus not. Uh, if it's using the kind of biometrics uh, that have been available before in the past uh, for facial recognition software, it shouldn't be easily tricked by them. Uh, by these kinds of changes. Now, I've seen, uh, I haven't watched the video yet, but I saw a, a link on YouTube the other day uh, saying that uh, the recognition feature had failed when Tim Cook tried to demo it, much in much the same way that uh, uh, Bill Gates had had a failure while demonstrating Windows. So we'll see how that comes up. Now, when you're looking at carriers, be aware of something, okay? Uh, when you go to get your phone, you have to pay attention to which type of network uh, your carrier is using, okay? Because uh, there, there's one model of it that does not support the CDMA network that uh, is used by Verizon and Sprint. It's not that you can't get a phone that will work. It's just you have to be careful which one you get. So if you're going through a third party and not going directly through your carrier, make sure to check to see which type of, uh, of radio it needs. Uh, and of course, that should be uh, an interesting thing to have to think about. Uh, one other change, uh, in addition to the ones that I've already mentioned, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is no more. Uh, you connect through a lightning adapter, a lightning connector, and connect your headphones through there. Although if you've got a good pair of headphones that you or earbuds that use the old headphone jack, like on a six or a five, 
you can still use those because included in the box is an adapter. Now, uh, it, the anniversary edition is supposed to have uh, two hours more battery life than the iPhone 7, uh, talk time up to 21 hours, 12 hours of internet use, uh, and of course, it's got some sensors for facial ID, barometrics, uh, three axis gyro, accelerometer, uh, ambient light sensor, and proximity sensor. Uh, that gives you an idea of that model. The eight the iPhone 8, the standard model, is a little different. Uh, it doesn't cost you quite a grand. You can pre-order it beginning in uh, September 15th, and it'll be available by the 22nd. And the changes, basically, the, a lot of the guts, the hardware is the same. You do, it appears to me that you do lose the uh, facial recognition setup uh, in this particular model. And once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up the tech specs real quick here. Uh, you notice I didn't spend a lot of time going through spec by spec, because I think that's easier to read than to hear me talk about. But same thing, 64 gigabyte model and a 256 now, uh, gigabyte. Now, I was wrong about one thing that I said last week. I was anticipating that the floor for capacity would be 32 gig instead of 64. Missed it on that one, okay? Uh, but you can see both models, uh, some, some different things. It's got the same uh, dust, splash, water resistance as the anniversary model, same A11 chip. Uh, there have been some changes to the cameras there. Um, changes to some of the sensors, uh, a lot of that is the same. You don't have the facial recognition. You do have a seven megapixel FaceTime camera and, and, and you still can use Touch ID because it still has the uh, home button. Same note about the carrier. Make sure that you get the one that has the right radio for your kind of carrier. Your carrier can assist you with that. Uh, make sure you get the right one for uh, the right, because they can easily tell you what type of uh, system they are using. Of course, we talked a little bit about the Apple Watch. The Apple TV uh, is going to support 4K. That's the biggest change, uh, whereas previous models have not uh, supported 4K. This one does. Uh, and... That, I think that is partly, Apple was a little bit late to the 4K game. I think in part because uh, there just hasn't been a lot of 4K available, uh, content available. And recently it's starting to appear a little bit more. And the other reason to push them in the direct, uh, several of the vendors already have phones out that support 4K. And, and here's, I think, the thing that pushed it. Down on the bottom here, you'll see a compare models. Let's go ahead and click on that. But I think the other thing that drove Apple to making this version support 4K is that now their flagship phones, uh, the 7s, the 8s, uh, and, and the anniversary edition, support shooting in 4K. And more and more 4K television sets are available. So obviously people are going to want to uh, play back their content in that. So as you can see here, uh, the 32 gigabyte model is going to start at about $180. The 64 gigabyte model will be just under $200. Uh, and that's about, as I say, that's about a $30 difference from uh, the current uh, Apple TV. The chip has been improved. Uh, the networking now goes up to gigabit networking if you are using uh, a wired connection. It's HDMI 2 as opposed to 1.4. Of course, you've got the Siri remote and with the accelerometer and all of that. Uh, size and weight is not significantly changed. In fact, it doesn't look like it's changed at all, really. 
audio output now Dolby Digital Plus with 7.1 surround sound that hasn't changed and so the changes are minor but if you're like me and you're still stuck in the uh, iPhone 3 I mean excuse me the Apple TV 3 that might be something to look at particularly if you are interested in uh, some of the applications that are becoming available so that'll be something to keep you chewing on and as I delve into these things a little bit more and read some of the reviews, I'll have more information. Uh, once again, Tidbits has got some good summaries of uh, Apple TV, uh, iOS, and the whole uh, summary of the whole uh, event. So that'll keep you busy with a little bit of reading. I've got a comparison page linked to that shows you the different iPhone models and what their, what their uh, features are, just in case you're going to be buying and you need a good place to start looking. And then, of course, I, I mentioned to you that I would have a link to the cellular pricing for the Apple Watch. And I have that as well. I haven't read through all of that because not being an Apple Watch person, this is not going to be an issue for me for a while. Uh, looks like Verizon is going to charge an extra $10 a month for using an Apple Watch under their plan if you use that number share service, okay, with the first three months free for a limited time, and it's a one-time $30 activation fee. AT&T similarly will cost about an extra $10 a month, uh, first three months free in the form of a $30 credit. Uh, looks like T-Mobile, uh, $10 a month. So most of the U.S. carriers seem to be charging about $10 a month. Check into it a little bit, though, because sometimes they'll give you a little bit of a break if you do things like sign up for electronic bill pay uh, and things of that nature. Some of them also have discounts if you are a member of particular organizations. Uh, school employees, things like that. So, so uh, check into that and recheck periodically because those discounts are constantly changing as they try to snag uh, customers from each other. All right, that's going to wrap up the uh, event coverage. I still haven't watched that entire keynote. I haven't, haven't really had time. I've been kind of reading through some, some of the uh, summaries on the net. But one other little tid, couple other little tidbits that I want to sneak in here for you. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I've been running the uh, High Sierra Public Beta since shortly after it came out, and I got an email the other day that basically says, "G Golden Master," which is the last beta in in software development parlance. Uh, a GM candidate is hoped to be the last beta before uh, the final release. So this would be the this would indicate that this is going to be probably be the last beta before High Sierra is released. That's available now. Okay, the final release for iOS and TVOS will be available September nineteenth. So starting this week, you should probably see uh, a notification on your devices about iOS and tvOS changes. Uh, that should drop this week. And then the final release for macOS for High Sierra will be available on the 25th. I was off by a couple weeks because uh, I told you probably mid-October at the latest. Uh, so it looks like we're right in that window. I, I The last prediction I made said uh, end of September to mid-October, and I was leaning more in the direction of mid-October, but it looks like if everything stays on schedule, they're going to have it um, beginning September 25th for the Mac OS and beginning on uh, the 19th for iOS and the tvOS. Now, if you have been running the beta, uh, 
do be careful. Uh, they, they did send a link around about a procedure. Um, fusion drives, if you're running the beta on fusion drives, the initial release of High Sierra is apparently not going to support the new Apple file system, APFS, on a fusion drive. It, it, it apparently is supported on external drives and if you've got SSDs, but on a Fusion drive, it looks like the initial release isn't going to be supported on with the combination of uh, Apple file system and uh, a Fusion drive. So they give you an idea how to back down and prepare yourself, backing the, thing, the system down to essentially an HFS plus setup until they get support for that working. Uh, so I'm not sure what that's all about. I haven't, I haven't uh, looked at that yet strictly because I still, I'm running uh, Apple file system right now and I want to uh, do some more time tests to see if it's as fast as it says or as some of the pundits seem to think it is. So I'll keep you posted on that. If you are running a Fusion Drive, like me, if you're an iMac user and you're running a Fusion Drive, uh, I'll have a link to that article as well because it describes to you a process where you basically back up your data, uh, create a High Sierra installer, and then use that to blast your boot drive and bring it back to HFS Plus. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do that or I'm just going to wait a while and see how long it takes them to get uh, it, the Apple file system support on a Fusion Drive. So lots of decisions, lots of things to check on this week. Uh, those of you that uh, are kind of waiting on this, uh, sorry, but there are some things, some of these things just need to be checked out before I can give you a definitive answer. And that's going to just about do it for this week. A lot of content jammed into a short amount of time. That's going to just about do it for this week. Uh, and this is your host, Sylvester Rock, a.k.a. Sly Dude on the forum. Uh, as usual, I'll see you in the forum if you've got a question about the show or suggestion for a topic that you would like to see, put it in the uh, show thread, and I'll try to address it if I can. If I don't know the answer, maybe I can find someone who does. Uh, also, as I say, uh, next week, if you'll tune in, I'll have some more definitive answers for you about the uh, iTunes 12.7 update and how to work around some of the issues that that's created. And so it should be an interesting uh, time. Until next week, guys, uh, this is your host, Sylvester Rock. I'll see you in the forum.